Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Friday, August the 16th, 2024. Friday, August the 16th. Well, um, hmm, I'm going to start with the bottom, okay? Uh, the whole pharmacist situation going on. Jason does, you know, get to the pharmacist and, you know, threatens the pharmacist and pretty much you know the pharmacist was going to sing like a canary right and Scott while Jason was banging on the door Scott was around the corner coming back with his big old bag of snacks now see had he taken the pharmacist away earlier Jason would not have gotten there in time except Brick's men were following him anyway they would have known there were that pharmacist was on Spoon Island. So doesn't matter. So the pharmacist does squeal like a canary. He says, yes. Uh, he says, Ava Jerome already knew that Sonny Corinthos' medications were tampered with when she came to him the first time. He goes, I thought she was going to turn me in, call the cops. She did nothing. He said, then when she came back the second time, she told me to make them placebos, no medicine. So then Jason says, okay, then who was the original person that ordered Sonny's medications to be tampered with? And do you know he did give Valentine up? I was shocked, everybody. I was shocked. Like, wait, what? He actually gave up Valentine. So Scott calls Kate's, because Kate's is still with Ava, and says, Jason has the pharmacist and that plan is out the window. And Ava's panicky now. She said, oh my God, Sonny's going to come after me because he's going to give me up the pharmacist, right? Which he sure did. And so Kate says, not if I can help it. And she goes, what does that mean? And he takes off out of there. Well, it's Christina's discharge day. And Alexis was, you know, with her, helping her get dressed. Dr. Navarro came in and said, yes, Christina can conceive and, and have a baby in the future, but she does have to be monitored. And Sunny comes in. And Christina asks Ava to go get her something from the vending machine. And Ava's like, uh, okay, I can read the room or take a hint. So soon as Ava leaves the room, Christina has the nerve to ask her father, is it done? And he says, uh, is what done? And she goes, is Ava dead? Oh, and Sonny's like, uh, no. Oh. She said, Christina, your mother knows what you asked me, okay? And if Ava turned up dead, what do you think would happen? And he goes, on top of the fact, we don't want Ava's death weighing on your soul, on your conscience, because you would feel guilty. I would not feel guilty. Oh, she's just on it. I want her dead. And I'm like, oh, no. See, this is somebody completely, well, Christina was always an irrational thinker. Let's be real. She's never thought things through. Quite frankly, I think she is uh, has bipolar, just like her dad, just on a lesser level. She's never been tested. It is genetic, okay? Can be genetic. Morgan had it. It rings true. Christina probably has it too, right? So um, Sonny's like, no, Ava is going to jail. And she's going to pay for what she's done. And that's what you need to be concerned about. So <laughs> Alexis is out. And she's talking with, I forget who Alexis was talking with at the corridor. And Christina comes, Sonny's wheeling Christina out in the wheelchair. Now, mind you, in a hospital, let's be real. Who? wheels the patient out of the hospital. It's an orderly. 
and or a nurse, right? It is not the patient's daddy. And I was like, well, that was convenient. Sonny's pushing her out. So in comes Kate. And I mean, I'm just... <sighs> Christina Corinthos, you're under arrest. And Sonny looks at Kate and Kate's just standing back. Like, yeah, uh -huh. I'll get her. So he tells Ava, okay, this is a federal, I'm on it. He goes, we're going to turn the pictures around because they do show Christina is, is an aggressor, but it doesn't show Christina putting her hands on Ava, right? But it does show Christina angry. But see, angry and putting your hands on somebody are two different things. Truly. Right? And so she goes, and see, you are a federal witness in my case against Sonny Corinthos. And Alexa, I mean, Ava looks at him and says, wait, uh, I am, wait, uh, I am? Like, oh, no, no, no. And he goes, yes. If you want this to work, yes. See, now he's getting Ava entangled up with him, okay? And now with Christina being the aggressor, this puts me in charge. I can arrest her federally. Now, everybody, I, I, when he said that, I thought, I'm not an FBI agent. I'm not in law enforcement. None of that. But how many of you out there in Daily Recap Land feel that is true? Because, see, I'm willing to say 100% not true. Because Christina was... Christina is, uh, wait, Ava is being investigated by the Port Charles PD. She was in jail. She's just out on bail because of what she did to Christina. The FBI cannot come in now and say, no, local police commissioner, we are choosing not to look at it your way. Because, see, it's up to the district attorney to prove the case or not prove the case. Now, Ava can file a countersuit that she was the one being attacked. Scott Baldwin, that's what he's for. But for Kate coming in, arresting Christina on a federal level, that's completely unorthodox and out of line in my opinion and if it's not god help us all right <laughs> that's all i got to say because i said how can christina is and ava are already involved in a case an investigation that has nothing to do with kate as a federal agent nor does his superiors know what he's doing see Everybody's sitting around from Anna to Brennan to everybody saying, I wonder this case, Jason said, I wonder this case is Kate's boss. Bosses know what he's doing. Has anybody picked up the doggone phone and asked? As it is when Kate lost, well, when um, the case was dropped against Carly and Kate's made a behind of himself with an A, Right, he was forewarned that you are being looked at. He was forewarned by that prosecutor or whatever he was. Right, he's not, he's in hot water, but they're still letting him run ranchard, rampant. So I just shake my head and I'm like, what kind of writing is this? Let's be real. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And quite frankly, 
first I was like, I don't know why Jason gave Anna all the pictures, but it doesn't matter actually. Yeah, we see Christina mad, but Christina's not putting her hands on Ava. Ava's the one that got her hand on her back and, you know, so we, we got a lot going on there, right? So we'll see how that goes. But I just, I just shook my head at that. And, and now Jason is going to, I don't know what he's going to, oh, I don't know what he's going to do with the, the pharmacist. He should take the pharmacist to Anna. Mm -hmm. And he should tell Anna, oh, this is going officially on the record. It was Valentin that ordered Sonny Corinthos' medications to be tampered with way back in December or further, right? Valentina is already on the hook for pipemen. So these true charges, whatever, right? So then we have Laura. She's calling Anna to her office and Brennan saying she wants them to work together to find Valentine Cassidine. And Anna looks at her. And Brennan looks at Laura and Anna, <laughs> right? Because they both are protecting Valentine for their own reasons, right? And Anna says, well, Laura, um, why? Because he has my granddaughter, Charlotte. Um, I don't know, everybody. Has Valentine kidnapped his own daughter? Who has custody of his daughter, Charlotte? Valentine. Who can take his daughter, Charlotte, anywhere on the planet to live? Valentine. Now, yes, he's wanted by the FBI and the law, but guess what? They got to find him first. Laura has no pull, no leverage as mayor. See, she will try. That's one thing I don't like about Laura. She will try to use her weight as the mayor when personal issues are at stake. For her. Yes, she will. In a heartbeat. But remember, she's... She's still the anti-Sunny now because she flipped. Oh, okay, Laura. So what was interesting is Laura had to leave the room to handle an issue. And Brennan and Anna, it was so funny, were at each other's throats. She said, you know where Valentine is. You this, you that. And he goes, I told you I'm not going to confirm or deny that. But you're the one that let him go. So, as she's looking, my whole thing is she keeps asking him that question. I think Anna wants to know where Valentine's at so she can sneak away and go see him. Let's be real. Otherwise, why would she keep saying, I know you know where Valentine is at? Who cares? He got away. Shut up about it, Anna. Leave it alone, Anna. Hypocrite. So then Laura, they're just arguing. And when Laura comes back in, they straighten up. She goes, is everything okay in here? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so Laura sits down and she gets another phone call. And it's from the facility regarding Lulu. And Laura says, when did this happen? See, soap operas are so soap opera-ish. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When did this happen? I'll be right there. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Because Anna's like, is everything okay? Brennan was gone. And she goes, it's Lulu. She gets up. Now, watch it be Lulu has brain activity. Lulu's moving. She may not be fully awake, but I don't believe Lulu is dead, right? 
when Laura got the true met phone call, should have been what? I'll be right there. Oh my god, yeah. But see, that would let us know too much, right? They wouldn't think that that's gonna be cliffhanger Friday. Just like Dr. Navarro coming in, I've got the results from your exit exam. It's like, oh my God, doctor, do I have cancer now? What? What's going on? Oh, the results show, oh, you'll be able to have children again in the future. Mm -hmm. You just need some money. Is that, they do that all the time. Oh my goodness. So let's see. Alexis was actually, believe it or not, trying to convince Molly that she and Christina should be able to lean on each other through this, which I don't know why Alexis would bother because to no, you should know that's too raw for the both of them. They should not be leaning on each other because there's going to be resentment naturally on Molly's part, naturally. Christina put herself in a situation she did not have to be in. So naturally, you're going to have some feelings of resentment. Leave it alone, Alexis. You nurse your baby, right? Nurse both of your babies separately, but don't try to convince one to be there for the other. If it's going to happen, it is going to happen. They're adults on their own, all on their own. It'll happen. And see, where the heck is Sam? Let Sam be the nurser. Sam could, should have been there at the hospital with Alexis and Christina. What is this? Where is Sam? So um, Molly was telling her, because, you know, she goes, you don't, I know you want to be there for your sister. And she's like, really, why? Because Christina always has to be coddled. They did not get into Molly. Yeah, Molly did say she did not have to be in that hotel room she did not have to uh confront ava see alexis hasn't seen the pictures and alexis is kind of just looking at molly because she said molly should have flat out told her i honestly believe she was the she was the aggressor christina right but before Molly ran into Alexis, because she had just come, she had to have a meeting with Stella and TJ over the baby's birth certificate, um, you know, preliminary name and the information on it. Um, and she showed up late, of course, and TJ was so upset. He goes, she knew what time this was. So he started without her. Stella filled out most of it. Curtis was there for support. And then Molly comes in, sorry, I'm late. And TJ stands up, he goes, yeah, late for something. You knew exactly what time was going to start, something important. And he's just looking at her. And she goes, I do have a boss, TJ. I got caught at work. And TJ's looking at her, your boss? would have understood see yeah realistically molly could be taking some time off some grievance time off but she's not right so stella is noticing listening to this and she goes well listen molly says so what did i miss tj's like everything <laughs> stella says no um you know we filled out this form um he goes we need to name our baby when he looks at Molly, and she's looking. My whole thing is, at this point, TJ, you've asked her how many times? Ten? Name the baby what you want to name the baby. Name the baby what you want to name the baby. It is clear Molly doesn't want to be involved with it. Right? Or it's just Christina is, is, is out of touch out of whack. Otherwise, Christina could have slapped the name on there and they all would have been surprised because she is the mother and I'm surprised the hospital 
didn't give her the birth certificate to fill out? What information does she want on it? Right? So anyway, um, Stella says, gives them some little pep talk about they need to lean on each other. And right now they just put baby Davis, uh, baby Lansing Ashford, right? Or Davis Ashford, baby Davis Ashford. And they can come up with the first name and put it there later. So she and Curtis leave the room and TJ and Molly, they do talk. I don't know if they had a meeting of the mind, but they do talk. And then that's when it shows later Molly coming off the elevator. Alexis just assuming she was there to see Christina. And Molly's like, no, I'm not here to see Christina. I had to meet TJ here. We had to do the baby's birth certificate. And Alexis was like, oh, I know that was difficult and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And then back into the conversation I already talked about. Now, here's what was interesting to me. TJ shows up at Ava's gallery. And when Ava walks from out the back, she looks. She's thinking he's there to confront her. She goes, well, I've already had an uncomfortable confrontation with, and he goes, Molly, the, the assistant DA, I know. She goes, and I don't want another one without my lawyer present. And he goes, I'm not here to have a confrontation. I'm here to get answers. I'm here to get answers on how my baby died. And I want to hear another version other than Christina's version. And Ava's like, goes, <clears throat> I want to hear your version. And I'm thinking, hmm. now that was odd. I want to hear your version. TJ knows Ava Jerome. TJ knows what Ava Jerome is into. He's not like he don't know her. But you're gonna come to her, and I and and I let, let's say I'm Ava, and he said what he said, and I thought, ooh, captive audience, let me spin my lie to him, the lie she's been telling everybody else. And where Ava is lying is Christina did not try to attack her. She did not. And Ava had to move out the way because she lunged at me. That's a lie. I didn't say anything to provoke her because she's pregnant. That's a lie. All, all of that's a lie. But see, TJ want to listen to that liar. Because he's feeling that Molly is on her sister's side and he wants to really inwardly be on the opposite side of Molly. That's really what that's about. He wants to be on the opposite side of Molly. And with Kate arresting Christina, TJ is going to feel justified in it. And Molly, oh, that's who Alexis was talking to. Remember earlier I said, oh, Alexis is talking. She's still talking to Molly when this happened. Molly is not going to be on Christina's side like Christina thinks she is. But what's interesting to me is everybody's saying Christina's story, Christina's story. Have any of you ever heard Christina tell her story. I know I haven't. I didn't see the police come get her statement. I didn't hear her when she woke up actually tell anyone Ava pushed her out that window. Not at all. When Christina saw the pictures, Christina's made up the narrative. Because Christina knows Ava, he may have grabbed her arm or reached for her arm. She knows she pulled away and tripped. Me pulling somebody, yeah, somebody may have touched my arm. I may have jerked away because we heated. And as I'm jerking away, I fell. 
in my mind, I still know this person did not push me, didn't push me. I pulled away because I wasn't finished arguing with them. It's a diff it's a far cry, far different story. So uh, Christina is allowing the lie of the assumption from her father. And, you know, everybody's seeing the pictures. Well, not everybody, because Molly's seeing a different story. Kate saw a different story. People that want to look at it for what it is, they see Christina as the aggressor, but they don't see Christina. The pictures absolutely don't show her attacking Ava, like Ava is saying. So the biggest discrepancy is Ava's story. Because we haven't heard Christina's story yet. That's what's interesting. We haven't heard it. So anyway, everybody, that's it. That's it for Friday. Uh, I don't honestly know if I like where they're going with this whole Kate's arrested. You know, John Kate's, Brennan needs to just take care of him. He needs to go. I'm I'm through with the character. I'm through with the act. I'm through with the whole FBI Kate's. Let's get rid of him and let's move on. Bring back Cyrus Renault. Let's get into some Cyrus land because this FBI crap is, and, and Brennan is going to do some dirt. So let's let's deal with that and get rid of Kate. Let's go to Comment Corner, Comment Corner today. Oh my goodness, 75 comments, everybody. You all are so phenomenal with Comment Corner. I'm going to start from the middle today and work myself down. So we have Sharon says, I think Scott will double cross Kate. Well, guess what? Scott sure didn't. Jason showed up and Scott booked it. And then Brenda says to Sharon, I believe all of them are double, <laughs> are going to double cross each other. Ava, Scott, boy, and dear John, they are. But John is the worst. He's really, he don't care what kind of, how he leaves Ava. He, he let, makes her pretend he's her savior, but he's only working his own agenda. P. Merle says to Brenda, right, three of the most narcissist people on the show. Ava would throw her mother under the bus. Yeah, she would. Sharon says, Scott doesn't like anybody. Scott will turn on Kate. So yeah, because Kate's hurt Karen. And she said, Sharon, I think Scott really cares for Lucy, Laura, Lisa Albright. Yeah, Elizabeth and her boys, and maybe Ava. Yeah, because... um. And he really loved his son, Franco. Yeah, that is true about Scott. Sharon says, Ava sees John malicious behavior, malicious behavior to get Sonny. Yeah, but that's what his downfall is going to be. DB says, now he's sprung. She's sure can pick him up, can pick him. And I am says, she sees she can't control him. Sharon says, Kate will do or use anybody to get Sunny. And she says, I hope Natalia is not working undercover for a mob boss based in Puerto Rico. And she does not play like Gladys Corbin, clean Sunny out. Tracy, Lucy, Maxi, and Brooklyn's bank accounts. Nah, Natalia won't have that kind of access. Now here's what I, I feel is very unrealistic with this whole Sunny infusing a lot of cash. Does it mean his representative takes the CFO position in the company? It should not have been. She is, is definitely there to monitor the uses of his funds, but that's on a contractor basis, you know? That's not a, a, a corporate position in that company. It shouldn't be. Sonny's given a lot of cash, but he's not the largest cash benefactor in deception is Tracy. And then Sabrina says, ooh, we, that's one for the memory. She gave up on or near by where Sonny's, oh, she grew up on or nearby Sonny's Island. She has to know who he is. I have always thought she was doing something with Blaze's money. I, I, they didn't get, give me that in, inkling at all. Maybe she got caught and someone is blackmailing her to infiltrate Sonny's organization. No. Just my thoughts. I don't think though, Sabrina. Um, but you want to know what storyline they did throw by the wayside, right? Remember, her brother was supposed to be coming to town. This is where the writers really did kind of shift gears. Blaze's brother was supposed to come when they were still building up a storyline around Blaze and her family. 
Lisa says, Max, deci Max deciding who James takes writing lessons from um, is not his place. He thinks it is his place to tell James um, he can't see Cody. Luckily, Cody was where was there to help James out of the water. Finally, Max is going to let James take writing lessons from Cody. He was... He has run to see Cody before. Now her needs to, well, we mean she needs to punish him for running away again. Well, she did. She's punished for a month, right? Isn't that what she said? No video games, oh, right? Um, Aisha says, the cleanliness of Sonny's money isn't the only issue in the way of Sonny investing in deception. There's also his notoriety to consider. I can see Tracy playing dirty, dirty to crush the opposition to her up to her opposition to Sony's Sonny's involvement in any way. Then there's Natalia herself, a recent figure of notoriety, whose lack of friends, boo-hoo, is more a function of how she treat, how she has treated and interacted with people according to their status and usefulness to her. That is true. Aisha makes a good point, you know, good, nice, long point. But Sonny's a silent investor. So silent investors, he won't be, his name won't come out publicly, but Natalia is public, and which is why I'm saying she should not become CFO of deception due to her statements. She never even made any kind of, she, what she said and what it did is against deception's business model. So she should not be CFO at this company. She should only be working for Sonny, monitoring his money, period. That's it. I, I don't, well, plus, let's be real. We don't need Eva LaRue's character or, or Natalia on the show. We don't need it at all. Um, and then Terry says, I like Natalia. I like Natalia. However, for the same sex kissed each other, Blaze to me was boring. Uh, glad she's gone. Well, I don't quite get the first part of your sentence. Mac, uh, Mac wasn't real like either when he first came to town. Oh, I see. Ryan, uh, Robert threw him in the water. I've been a GH fan for over 45 years. I am says, yes, Jason said, Sonny didn't take care of, you mean that, the coffee business. People forget each time Jason takes over the business, he created clean, uh, clean business and creates growth and actually built Sonny's empire. Yeah, I believe that. Jason also gave, uh, loaned Sonny 50 million uh, to use and the use of his shares to get back at the W's. Who are the W's waiting to control him? I don't know who the W's are. Um, and then my last comment is, uh, this is how Drew and Willow's kiss make it to Wiley and Michael. Willow is so stupid thinking Drew is so honest with her about everything. Nina uh, should have told her she and Drew are together. Willow is daydreaming about Drew and she is so wrong for daydreaming about, about Drew and nitpicking things uh, about her husband. You are so right. All right, everybody. Great comments. Great comments on Comment Corner. I love them. Keep them going. Um, that's it. I will be back Monday for another daily recap of General Hospital.